everybody, it's chaos with chaos theory. Look, how I view stuff is how I view it. Don't mean it's a fact, fiction, but however, what it is, more than anything, it's common sense. And hopefully your sense is common, because common sense ain't common. Check it out, what we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about the situation that i seen online. I'm going to do with the baby. Why I'm bringing up the baby? Because I like to bring up people that I feel is credible. I like to bring up people that I feel going to say something that's truthful and if they're giving you something, even if they're holding back something, you can see it. You know what I mean? And a hood dude, a hood dude when he's speaking on some stuff that happened that shouldn't have been happening to him, is going to, you're going to see it on his face. You're going to hear it in his voice. And the different octaves and all that stuff with the rising and lows, you're going to notice all that. Let's watch it. This was the beginning of, of 2020. You know what I mean? Uh, Diddy had he had put everybody else out the crib, like the the influx of people he had put him out. But he had he had uh he had took a, a liking to me in particular. He's noticed how my dude voice is shaking. It don't sound like he's being interviewed by by somebody from a TV network or a blog or entertainment in any kind of case. It sounds like he's been interviewed by the police. And if you insane, watch any court TV, you ain't have to build that yourself. I've been there myself, but we still not talking about me, we're talking about you. If you've been there yourself, you know this is how you sound. Whole lot of stutter, whole lot of uncomfortableness. I'm trying to give you the truth, but not give you too much information. And then also, I'm gonna make sure that when I give you something, that when the other people find out that I gave it to you, I don't look too bad, I don't sound too bad, and forget it, I might want you to look bad over me looking bad. So now I'm giving you a little bit too much. That's why the voice is shaking and why he's choking up, you know what I mean? Around the time, man, it was really, you know what I mean? Like putting his arm around me. Right. So he had put majority of the people out, but he allowed me to stay in there. Mm -hmm. Me and you know maybe about maybe about fifteen others, you know, right. Jay Z and Beyonce being, you know, two of the other 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 fifteen people in the room. So that that just put into perspective of the type of company I was in. I heard that there's supposed to be some tapes or something that's coming out real soon, and I guess we'll all really know the truth if anything's on those tapes you guys aren't going to believe this one in a recent interview the baby dropped some bombshells about his experiences as a diddy freak off survivor and you won't believe the twists and turns he's sharing we've all heard the shady stuff that's been going on behind the scenes at diddy's infamous parties you know the ones where diddy likes to invite all of his best buddies and have fun with each other and recent news has it that the baby not only was present at these gatherings but he's actually pulling back the curtains on this dark, dark era of his life. Get your popcorn, folks, because this is going to be a wild one. All right, so let me start with this wild night at Puff's crib. That happened back in 2020. When DaBaby talked about it in an interview, he had us hooked on this story. And you could tell by the way he was telling it. He was nervous. Real nervous. Now, does that mean he's seen things that people like Diddy wouldn't want the world to know? Maybe. Let's get into what happened that night. It was this star-studded party at Diddy's mansion with Beyonce and Jay-Z chilling in the same room. The kind of thing you would expect music moguls like Puff and Queen Bee to throw, right? It was the kind of party you'd expect to see in Hollywood. A bunch of celebs, beautiful women, the whole nine yards. But as the night went on, the crowd started thinning out and things took a bit of a turn. But what went down that had the poor guy so shaken and terrified? Well, the baby started talking about how during the night of the party, initially it was all cool, but then, at one point in the night, Puff started getting real cozy, like invading his personal space. And it wasn't just inappropriate things that Diddy said, things went a little too far. During the night, the baby talked about how, at one point, Diddy even had his arm around him, and you could sense the discomfort in his voice as he spilled these details. Diddy had he had put everybody else out the crib, like the, the influx of people he had put him out. But he had he had uh he had took a, a liking to me in particular around the time, man. It was really, you know what I mean, like putting his arm around me. Right. Check this out. When you when you talking about somebody that took a liking to you at the time and he was really putting his arm around you, you ain't saying it like that. When I'm bothered and I'm talking about somebody Put me arm around me too much. No, the person gay person, you know what I mean? Like, I could be in all walks of circles and I need to be comfortable. But if I know your own boy is gay and he's my boss or whoever, and we talking and we hanging out and we etc. and you and put your arm on me too much, I'ma notice that. And that's gonna make me uncomfortable. You feel me? 
So when I talk about it, and I'm telling the story, I tell them, yeah, well, I know the like, certain circles kept on putting their arm around. You gonna mention that other night? I would not mention this on some other person that we laugh and have a drink with and we throw on those bottles with and they put their arm around me. I wouldn't have mentioned it because it wouldn't have caught my attention. But if you're doing it and it gives me an offset vibe of what I'm comfortable with, you're going to bring that up, which is what it's bringing up. Imagine being at a party with big names like Beyonce and Jay-Z and things start getting a bit too close for comfort. Now, if I were an up-and-coming artist, it would be hard for me to make sense of the situation, and that was exactly what he was going through as well, especially with all the allegations coming about Diddy's behavior towards young artists that he shows a liking for. We all know what happened to Cassie and her relationship with Diddy, given the lawsuit she filed about the horrible things she had to go through. The baby said, it was like the vibe went from party mode to, wait, what's happening here? With just a handful of people left in the room. He then revealed that the party initially had a lot of people, but as the night started going into late hours, rumor has it that Puffy had the room cleared out with only a few hand-picked people, some of which included big names like Jay-Z and Beyonce. What happened next, behind the closed doors of Diddy's mansion, has yet to be revealed, but judging from Dababi's shaky voice, it couldn't have been good. Fans also felt bad for him with one person writing, Damn and Da Baby just admitted Diddy got him at one of his parties. Another added, Diddy had Da Baby right where he wanted him. Now here's the thing. This whole Puffy getting a bit too cozy with the baby doesn't exactly come as a shocker to some of us who've been following the music scene closely. He's got a bit of a history when it comes to getting up close and personal with up-and-coming artists in the industry. Over the years, Diddy has played the role of being a mentor to many artists that are now extremely successful. People like Justin Bieber and Usher come to mind. Now what exactly happened behind the scenes during these mentorships? No one knows, but fans are speculating the worst. I mean, you remember what Usher had to say about the infamous Puffy Flavor Camp, right? That's the crazy thing. Now, that yeah. was L.A. Reid's idea, right? We're sending New you over to City. something called Puffy Flavor Camp. There you go. To learn <laughs> Flavor some... Camp. Yeah, Flavor Camp! Yeah, that's what it was called. And you're going to go to Puff Daddy's. He's gonna In the 90s, do you understand what that's like? Puffy's place was like just filled with chicks and hoard like nonstop, right? No, not really. Come I mean, on. but... Notice he said filled with chicks. And Usher was like, not really. Because it was filled with dudes. Not chicks, dudes. And when you surround yourself with an influx of chicks, you can only do so many. So if you got an influx of chicks and you can only do so many, you know I'm high or something. Speaking of high, knowing this stuff wouldn't even get out like that. Why is it getting out like that now? Somebody allow it. Because you got rock and roll artists that do whatever they want, they, they get drunk, they they messing with guys and and, uh, and females, and, and at the same time, they messing with a lot of underage females. All them summer jams, a lot of underage females, they even got songs about it, but it ain't coming out. If this stuff happened, there should be a lot of lawsuits. But why nobody ain't putting a lawsuit? They putting it out there, but ain't nobody getting sued. And nobody allowing the lawsuit to go through. <clears throat> the baby should have a lawsuit. Usher should have a lawsuit. Some of everybody should have this. That's famous should have some type of lawsuit out there to say that this is what happened to me. This is what we go through and try to get movie deals and etc. And get uh, get album deals and etc. But ain't nobody putting it out there as far as a lawsuit. Now all of a sudden we hear about it, but nothing's been done about it. That's crazy to me. You know what I mean? It's like they're making everybody aware that this is who this person is, just to show that person and teach them a lesson. But they're not going to jail. But they're definitely teaching them a lesson. Like how did you get up? I can bring you all the way back down. Certain people like to show you that type of stuff too. Curious, I got a chance to see some things. Yeah, but you were 13. What were you I seeing? I went there to see the lifestyle. Right. And, and I saw it. Not long after, in the same interview, Howard Stearns even asked Usher if he would ever send his son to Puffy Flavor Camp. And it doesn't seem to be a big surprise that this was his reaction. You're a dad now. Would you ever send your kid to Puffy Camp? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> Over the years, Diddy seems to have followed a pattern when it comes to the young artists he mentors, maybe even getting a bit too close with them, and DaBaby might just be the latest on the list. So, when DaBaby came clean about feeling uncomfortable at that party, some of us were nodding our heads like, yeah, we've seen this before. Sean Combs got a track record, and it seems like DaBaby's got a story that fits right into that narrative. The question now is, what's the deal with Puff's personal space boundaries? Is it just his way of bonding? Or is there more to this story? And this isn't the first time someone has come forward about Diddy exploiting and invading their personal space. There's also Young Miami, who went through something similar to DaBaby. Ever since these accusations started flying at Diddy, it's been a whole drama fest involving everyone in his crew, including Young Miami. 
For those of you who don't know, Jung used to be one of Puff's partners. Now, apparently, there is talk that Miami is catching some serious cancellation vibes right alongside Diddy. But honestly, it's not that surprising considering Puff's big shot status in the industry and Miami's reputation is kind of linked to him. Some even think that if she's caught in some shady stuff, chances are that the root of it goes right back to Puffy. With P. Daddy taking a hit, it looks like young Miami is feeling the burn just as intensely, maybe even more. But here's the real kicker. We got a glimpse of Combs' reaction to young Miami, and she apparently did something that's gonna stick with him forever. There's even some leaked footage. Let me spill all the details. But first, let me introduce you to Gina Huynh, a model who used to date Puff and allegedly also faced much worse than what DaBaby went through. You've probably heard about Cassie filing a lawsuit against Diddy, but did you know she wasn't the only ex facing the repercussions of dating Diddy? He's got another ex, Gina Huynh, who is claiming some wild things that she went through during her relationship with Puffy. In a recent interview resurfacing from 2019, she talked about allegedly facing violence during their five-year relationship. Gina, who reportedly dated the music mogul while he was in an on-and-off period with Cassie, claimed... The thing that trips me out is that we're going through multiple women, multiple men. However, in going through multiple women, multiple men, Puffy is the villain. We all know Puffy's the villain. But if you're with him and you're sticking through him with him for some years, you're just as freaky as he is. You ain't doing all this freaked out stuff, but yet you're not leaving. You're not ever considering going somewhere else. You're still with this freaked out man doing this freaked out stuff, and you're never going nowhere. You're a freak. You ain't, you ain't, you ain't been tricked into sucking everybody and hitting everybody. Most of the situation you okay with because y'all talk about or laugh about that stuff later or set up the next situation. There ain't no way you stand around this man and any of this stuff is happening. Mind you, it's a way that you can get around somebody and something can pop off the first time, accidentally the second time, and you didn't know it was going to be there at the next place. But now, you're going to start avoiding that. They got to avoid They run into it. Too. So some of these people in any situation, like these females, they know what they're in, and they're okay with it. Like, young Miami, if you're not into that, you ain't going to still be around for years and years to come, and y'all doing nothing. No different than Beyonce. You ain't gonna be around Jay-Z knowing that he messed with men and you ain't okay with that. There's something that making you okay with that. Whether it's the money or whether you the fact that you just okay with that. Claimed he went all out in one disturbing encounter. According to her, he allegedly severely injured her in an encounter that left her with damages to the head, stomach, and chest. Another time was when he caught her texting another man in Miami. And that's when it got really crazy. Let me set the scene. They were upstairs in walk-in closet, and he pushed her to the ground. Just a thought. I know we're going to everything. The personality helps a whole lot. But you got to fuck with all this money. Who was she texting? And what were they doing to make her overlook puppy with all this money? Because he's doing freaky stuff that she must love. And she is still coming around. What is, what is this other person doing? How much money did he got? What did he have going on? And who was this other person? Hit me up. Let me know. I just want to know. It ain't going to benefit me in no kind of way. But we know it. <laughs> that helps me out a lot. Then she claims that he stood over her, punching the side of her head. She said she was just covering her face as he did that. Gina spilled more, claiming that he compared her to Cassie, calling her the bad one and Cassie the good one. She even said that everyone in Combs Circle allowed the alleged altercations to happen multiple times. In a surprising turn of events, she said that everyone in the circle allowed the alleged altercation to happen multiple times. So true. You kept coming back to this circle, you getting in that circle, Knowing that the alleged altercation happened multiple times. I don't like I don't like victims, but I don't like people that play victims either. I like I just like them the worst because a victim essentially didn't know what they was getting into. So they stuck. But one, you texting another dude, so you know that this situation could be much better. Two, this man beating on you, you know the situation could be much better. But then you keep coming back to that situation after you went left. Then you get, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but you get pregnant and instead want to show him that you're not the bad one, that you're not with him for his money, that you're the good one, meaning that you was okay with the altercation too and get beat on. You were okay with it, all right? Sometimes you got to save yourself. Gina spilled the beans that when she became pregnant with Diddy's child. He offered me 50000 to get rid of it, but I turned it down because um, I just, I just loved him and I just, uh, 
and I wanted I wanted to I was like trying to prove that I wasn't the girl that was wanted him, him for money. money okay I just just care about him and um I just wanted him to be nice to me that's it Gina disclosed having a second abortion from their relationship and this bombshell interview is causing quite a stir, especially after Cassie accused Sean Combs of R and SA in a recent lawsuit. As of now, he hasn't publicly addressed Gina's claims, and it seems like he probably won't. There's not much he can say in his defense, so he'll likely let his lawyers handle the situation. She even said once, He was like mentally, emotionally, and physically a me. He would always compare me to Cassie and tell me that I'm the bad one and she's the good one. Everyone else just kind of just allowed it to happen and just like look the other way. Now you remember how I said there was a connection between Young and Gina? Well, things took a shady turn for Young Miami when rumors started circulating that she and Diddy were collaborating to cause trouble for Gina. Miami spilled the tea, revealing that he went from being cool for the first three and a half years to turning into a downright mean guy. So while allegedly Miami was in it with him, she then realized that he had completely brainwashed her. Some even suggest that he included her and convinced her to be a part of all- She didn't feel that she was brainwashed until she realized she was gonna get treated like the rest of the girls. When she thought she was special and that he was gonna treat her different, she was ready to go get the other girl. You gotta learn to save your sister by saving yourself. You get yourself out of that situation when you sin that they messing over your sister. If you can't see your all image and another sister, then we have a problem with our queen. All these dirty things, so that if he ever got caught, she would be just as effed as him. Now reports suggest Miami had enough of it. She has had enough of Puff controlling her narrative and pulling her down with him. Apparently, to put an end to all of it, she is now teaming up with 50 Cent for a documentary exposing his alleged actions. 50 Cent's production company confirmed they are working on a doc about the allegations against Comb, adding another layer to this unfolding saga. After this drama, people all over the world have had enough of Diddy. This man is a monster. Why isn't he locked up? What kind of world are we living in to allow this blatant to go on for years? But that isn't the end of it. Diddy's facing some serious heat, not just from the four women suing him for SA, but there's this whole other drama. We keep talking about Diddy, 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 because apparently this is who the higher ups are mad at, right? What about Jay-Z? We're not gonna go into Jay-Z and Foxy Brown. I ain't even going that low. That's small stuff. But what about Jay-Z, who's also at this party and doing the same thing? What about Will Smith? The squeaky clean person that don't curse in their raps. I don't curse in my raps, but I'm gonna turn these little boys out and make sure that they're doing things that they should be doing. His son is admitting that this is what he were doing. This is what him and Puffy were doing. What about them? However, the target has been, has been set Everybody's aiming in on that. That's the bullseye we focus on Diddy. But me, I focus on the people that's around Diddy. What about Rick Ross? They say that he welcomed gay rappers. What about that? Like, you gotta see the people that's around these people and say, well, damn, well, what were they doing? Because now I'm like, okay, what was going on with Biggie? You feel me? There had to be some stuff going on around this man that everybody that was close to him, like J Lo, who I love to death. What about her? Like, what do you know? What do you say? What have you seen that you all are not being targeted? What did you not say? What are you uh, okay with keeping your mouth closed on? Because evidently they're okay with keeping their mouth closed on something. And these are supposed to be the people that y'all look up to. Feel me? 2018, a former male escort named Jonathan AI spilled the beans in a police video, claiming he was a s captive for Puff and his ex, Cassie Ventura. Wild, right? AI dropped some bombshell allegations during the interrogation, saying he had a thing with Comb and Cassie like 15 times and supposedly there are tapes of these encounters. Even Diddy's ex-bodyguard, Gene Deal, commented on the situation. I heard that there's supposed to be some tapes or something that's coming out real soon, and I guess we'll all really know the truth if anything's on those tapes. But nobody really knows what happened to Jonathan AI. Some say he might have passed away, but there's no solid info. Fast forward to now, with Cassie and others accusing Diddy of assault, and it looks like Jonathan's claims are getting a second look. This whole thing isn't just recent gossip though. Jonathan talked about it back in 2018, long before Combs' current troubles. He talked about getting involved in some shady stuff with Diddy's crew, even blaming Puffy for messing up his escorting gig. In the interrogation video, Jonathan revealed how messed up his life got after being involved with Diddy and Cassie. He ended up breaking into a hotel, had a showdown with the cops, and got shot in the leg. After that, he spilled everything. The drugs, 
the intimate acts, and even STDs. When he tried to bail, Puff apparently forced him into a settlement, probably to keep things hush-hush. But that didn't stop Diddy's lawyers from coming after him, making Jonathan feel like he was being hunted. And it's not just about the intimate stuff. Jonathan also claimed P. Diddy and Rick Ross are gay. He even brought up the Illuminati and some seriously... Listen, when I'm watching this stuff, I feel like I'm just now watching it. I've never seen this before. So my reaction is my reaction because I'm just watching it with you. Check this out. There ain't no way I said it on, on other takes, on other uh, reaction videos. There's no way that you and Rick Roth can say you're okay with this. I even, I don't get it. But if you into attacking females, Rick Roth stuff, talking about I put, uh, I slipped something in a drink, and basically she woke up the next morning, she didn't even know the same way he lost that, I think, Adidas uh, a, a contract. If you okay with doing that, you still not okay with being gay. So I get that he was doing the stuff that he was doing, but you want some other stuff, right? And the reason why you okay with gay rappers is because you ready to do gay rappers. It's crazy to me. It's crazy to me. It's always the one who are the hardest or who speaks on certain stuff as if uh, passive aggressive, passive aggressive, passive aggressive and overly aggressive. The ones who overly aggressive, watch them. The ones who are too passive, watch them. And if any of the, either one of those, the way to confirm that is when you find out something about somebody else that they're dealing with, they're not too far from that. That's usually your common denominator. You feel me? Because I've been wondering this whole time at one time Puffin and, and Rick was Hanging out tremendously. Okay, did Puffy stop his party during that time or something? Did Rick miss a call during those times? No, nah, he's in every situation with Puffy. Dark rituals. Now, people are torn. Some doubt Jonathan's story because of his mental health struggles, but others think he might be onto something. Back in 2018, authorities didn't take Jonathan too seriously, but with all the recent accusations against Diddy, folks are starting to wonder. There are even rumors that Jonathan might not be around anymore, fueling suspicions that maybe Comb silenced him. And then all of us know what went down with poor Cassie. Cassie took legal action against Diddy in New York federal court on Thursday, November 16th, alleging that the music executive essayed and aried her multiple times. Shockingly, she claimed an incident where she was coerced into having intimate relations with male workers while he watched. In her lawsuit, the Me and You singer stated that Diddy was prone to uncontrollable rage and frequently subjected her to severe beatings. Diddy's lawyer, Ben Braffman, refuted these allegations in a statement, asserting that Cassie had been seeking money from the Bad Boy Records founder. Braffman stated, Mr. Combs vehemently denies these- My problem is I feel like Cassie is just a straight up victim. By any stretch of the word, I don't want to say you're in the comments. You was willing too long. You decided to separate and say he started, he started catching him up on other situations with other females and you got tired of that. That was outside of you. Now, got you into doing other stuff that you wasn't doing before you met him? Yeah. More often than you would have liked to do it? Yeah. It's just a bad relationship. That people have bad relationships all the time. I feel that she was just in a bad relationship for an extended period of time that would have never ended if he would have been loyal to her. Hard to see how you loyal to somebody when you're in a situation like that, but it's called honesty. If you're honest and they're doing the stuff that they're doing within their relationship that they agreed upon, he would have been okay with her. But as soon as she found out about other people and situations that she wasn't okay with, and she got out, cool. That was a bad relationship at that period of time. That's how I feel about it. His offensive and outrageous allegations. For the past six months, Mr. Combs has been subjected to Ms. Ventura's persistent demand of $30 million under the threat of writing a damaging book about their relationship. Everybody that you write a book and when in reference to this dude normally dies. Everybody that you write a book in reference to any uh any uh bad occurrences of, of whatever normally dies. She's probably should chill. She ain't got her money, I'm pretty sure she's not gonna come up no more. Other people gonna start coming out after this scene that she got her money. That's why they're not gonna die. There's gonna be too many people, you me? Lord rest her soul, Kim died, she was writing a book. The only thing that got stolen out of her house when the book got into, laptop that supposedly had the book on it. Other people know about writing a book or her writing a book, so therefore they're talking about writing a book. That's not the best situation because other people that's been around and they're talking about writing a book. Not here no more. Which was unequivocally rejected as blatant blackmail. Cassie's attorney, Douglas Wigdor, responded by revealing that Cassie and Diddy had a conversation before the lawsuit was filed. According to Wigdor, the last night musician allegedly tried to silence Cassie by offering her a substantial amount of money 
eight figures worth to prevent her from taking legal action. However, Cassie rejected his attempts. In a new development, Diddy is reportedly under investigation by the NYPD. Cassie and Diddy had an on and off relationship until 2018, when they eventually separated. She has since married fitness trainer Alex Fine, and the couple now have two daughters together. The lawsuit lays out some pretty disturbing stuff about Diddy, accusing him of serious crimes like S.A. and R., and forcing Cassie to do some really uncomfortable stuff with male s workers. Cassie paints a picture of Diddy as not just the big shot at her record label, but also as someone she thought was a protector, only to end up in this messed up, unequal, and violent relationship. According to the legal papers, Diddy apparently used some pretty intense tactics to keep Cassie under his control, like wrecking a guy's car, threatening a friend by hanging them off a 17th floor balcony, and even asking Cassie to carry his gun in her ass. Cassie never went to the cops because she was scared it would just give Diddy another reason to hurt her. You never went to the cops. You mean when y'all separated or when y'all was together? Because y'all had an all and off relationship. Come on, dude. Y'all had an all and off relationship. Certain people of certain complexions don't get to get away with this. You, man, let's just say. You a black sister, you dark skin, there's no way you're getting away with this. They're going to say you was in a bad relationship. They're going to say you was, you was a accomplice to everything that had happened. There's no way you're going to tell them that you were scared to report any of this and you were on and off. And what stage were you scared to report, report of that? Because you could report it when you was on. Okay, then when you were off, you definitely could have reported it. Then why did you get back on again? They ain't going to fly. Certain, I want to make sure I say this to certain people out there. There are certain uh, crimes that you can't commit and there are certain excuses that you can't use. Try to stand your ground. I guarantee it's going to get the, 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 the explanation for why it don't work. It's going to be a lot different than George Zimmer. That's all I'm saying. Diddy, of course, denies everything. The lawsuit goes on to say, Cassie, Ms. Cassandra Ventura, was held down by Mr. Combs and endured over a decade of his violent behavior and disturbed demands. For Ms. Ventura, the dark times were those she spent trapped by Mr. Combs in a cycle of violence and S.A. According to the court papers, Diddy first showed interest in Cassie back in 2006 when his makeup artist spilled the beans pulling her into his high-flying lifestyle. Once they got into a romantic relationship, Diddy and his inner circle supposedly had a grip on every aspect of Cassie's life. According to the lawsuit, even though the people close to the Bad Boy Records founder witnessed physical harm, they chose to turn a blind eye. The court documents state, beatings were witnessed by Mr. Combs's staff and employees, but no one dared to speak up against their frightening and ferocious boss. Cassie. Friday in the road, and nobody ain't scared of it. Diddy ain't finna throw hands on nobody. Diddy ain't finna knock out nobody. But yet, you can have a certain type of pull that make people fear. And you don't have to be around that person. That victim, I don't know where else to go. That mess don't fly with me. You ain't gotta go there, no matter where you go. You feel me? And everybody that's around them, they typically around them because they're getting something off of it. Either get money from it, they cool with it, which make you complicit. They either uh, enjoy it themselves, which means they just as complicit. Or they're in a position where they get a certain amount of power from it. So they enjoy it themselves. They love their lifestyle. No different than she was. They just have fear. Fearing retaliation, refrain from going to the police. In a particularly harrowing incident in 2009, Diddy allegedly kicked her repeatedly and had his staff hide her in a hotel room. The filing claims that every time she tried to escape, Diddy's extensive network found her, with some employees even telling her that not returning to Diddy would hinder her success in the entertainment industry. What? You want my, what? What you gotta say now? What you gotta say now? You ain't got shit to say when you put your girl on the snap. Baby, yo, babe. I mean, shit getting weird. Come on, baby. It's hot outside. You wrapped up in that blanket. Let's go jog on the beach. The lawsuit highlights the toll on Cassie's mental health during her relationship with Diddy, including memory loss from excessive substance use and thoughts of. You know how many sisters that have bad relationships? You know how many dudes in the project, drug dealers, pimps, and etc. that engage some females some bad relationships? So many. So many, but you can't, you can't keep going back and forth in and out of the palms and saying that somebody's pushing you in. Eventually, you're gonna step in a couple of times when you just not come near the pump. They just hide away. Chaos theory. Shockingly, the court papers mention an instance where MRI results were sent directly to Diddy. In other shocking revelations within the lawsuit, 
Cassie claimed that Diddy coerced her into participating in what he called freak-offs. This arrangement involved her being compelled to organize and engage in acts with male s workers. These encounters allegedly took place over several years in luxury hotels across the country and occurred as frequently as once a week. Diddy reportedly documented these encounters by taking photos and filming them. Cassie attempted to delete videos from her phone, but it proved futile and she was even forced to watch footage on a flight that she believed she had erased. After one of these incidents in 2016, Diddy supposedly paid a hotel $50,000 to erase hallway surveillance footage. The footage reportedly showed an intoxicated Diddy throwing glass vases at Cassie when she tried to escape, resulting in a black eye. Cassie, in an attempt to cope, started abusing substances and drinking alcohol in hopes of handling the situation better. This intense substance abuse eventually led to addiction for Cassie. The lawsuit made a startling claim that Diddy, in an act of retaliation for Kid Cootie's brief relationship with Cassie in 2012, allegedly blew up the rapper's car. The filing stated that Diddy had previously expressed his intention to target Kid Cootie, and around that time, the suit notes, Kid Cootie's car exploded in his driveway. Kid Cootie confirmed the account in a statement through his spokesperson to the New York Times, saying, this is all true. The filing also alleges that in 2018, Diddy forcibly entered Cassie's home and aried her, despite her repeated objections and attempts to push him away. Following this traumatic incident, Cassie decided to end her relationship with Diddy for good and also severed ties with Bad Boy in 2019. And this disgusting list of the shit that he's pulled over the years doesn't end with Cassie. There's even talk of Combe being involved in Tupac's murder and ordering hits on his own record label. But here's the kicker. Puffy's got connections, so who knows if he'll ever have to face any of this. Look, there's so many different ways of looking at this thing. So let's talk about my personal situation. Like I, I which you all know, I did music, played football, uh, from powerlifting to some of everything. I've done some of everything, martial arts, everything, right? And in doing music, when I was, uh, my music was about to be passed to somebody, I was told that they would pass it to this one particular person, Puffy, because they know that how aggressive and how bad my attitude was that I would mess him up if he tried to force me. I said, what are we talking about? Force me to do what? Like, to do a song, to do, to do a collab I want to do, or to try to change my style? They're like, no, force you into something sexual. They're like, he's not like the other gay guys in the industry. They had actually try to convince you to do it, but he's going to try it. I said, why, why are we even having this conversation, dude? I was going to get at this dude just for having this conversation. I said, I see what you're talking about. Don't pass my music to nobody that's going to try to say anything about in order to progress that I got to have sex or do something homosexual that's outside of what I do. You feel me? Whatever everybody else do is perfectly fine with them. But when it comes to me and mine, I know I'm not willing to compromise mine. Not for a dollar. Chaos theory. Check out my cousin clothing line. Posh. Get it anywhere. Um, much respect to him. My, my cousin was shot midday to get his car. For his car, his little daughter don't have a father. I love you, Brad. Chaos theory. In the world on the street, I'm a bad mother, mother, mother.